Right, we've got George, Scott, Tom, Task 2, P2, M2, D1. Right, George, target group, what have you chosen? Um, it's disability. Good. Um, it can affect them with like lack of facilities, such as changing rooms, like ramps and lifts, to be able to get into the facility. L lack of coaches that are able to take them on, and lack of participants. The transport is a problem, as there may not be a bus route that leads to the centre, the, the large centre, or not enough taxis with disabled access, leading them to depend on their parents. Uh, it can also link in with money as they may not be able to pay for the bus or taxi. Yeah, right, Scott, the target group. I've done females and the various communications, one of them is money, whereas in most places you won't have like mixed gender groups. You'll have either a male team, but most of the time you won't have a female team for like for like rugby teams, it might be under fives or something, but when females are that age, the parents are more concentrated on getting them doing other stuff, like they always want the females to do better in school, they're always trying to get them to do more with themselves other than just playing sports, because it's not like deemed as what females would do, whereas if it was a male, they'd be getting them straight into sports, because it's the kind of stereotype that they've been put into with the gender. And the one I've done is... It was culture. And then in different parts of different countries, people do different sports. Like more in South and Midlands, people play football a lot more than, say, up north. Like up north Scotland, it's not really that known, whereas rugby is like different types of rugby. So if you go up north, there'll be a lot less people, uh, females playing rugby. Whereas the males will be playing Union, which is down south and League up north. How else might culture affect female participation? Uh, just the way that people see it. It's more or less how the people around them and what the kind of area is like. Right, so say Keith, for example. Keith. Or oh, Leeds. Ah, oh, Leeds. So different cultures in Leeds, maybe? Yeah, like, in Leeds, it's more stereotypical. There are a lot of girls playing, like, high physical demand sports. They're all, like, they all go to town, they go shopping. It's more or less the males do one thing, the females do another. They don't really cross paths and do sports, like, with each other. So what about religion as well, linking to that culture? Religion. Um, like, females in different religions, they may have to wear different clothing. So, say a Muslim girl wants to play sports, but they've got to dress fully, so not a skin showing. Like, if they're doing that and then they're trying to play sports, say they're wearing black, it's, it's not going to go well for them. They're going to get dehydrated a lot more. They can't wear the kit, which means they can't play because they're involved personal protection equipment and all that. Right, okay, good. Tom? Uh, the target group I chose was teenagers and the two barriers for participation was confidence and time. Uh, the confidence one, uh, they might not think they are physically good enough to play the sport they want to play. Mm -hmm. um, and also with, they might, if the friends aren't going, they might not feel confident enough to ask the coach or the team to participate in training or certain trials that they've got on. Yeah. Uh, with time, uh, because they're teenagers, they could have a part-time job, and because of the job, they might not be able to train with the local team due to like different training hours. And um, the other one that could be starting the GCSEs and won't have time to go to training because of um, starting revision and their exams. Right. Okay. Good. Right. Let's link it to continuum then, George. Um, it, can accept, uh, it can affect disabled people at foundation level as there may not be enough facilities for them to be able to start. Um, they may not have other friends that are disabled so they may not to go out and play sports. 
and Simeon also have a fear that they did get left out. Right, okay, good. Um, can affect him at participation, participation level. Um, as there may not be enough leagues for him to join, other leagues may be far away for him to play, so not enough, or not enough coaches. So it would be a struggling travel to get to games and training. At performance level, it can be hard for him to get noticed into an academy due to being disabled. Um, the academy they have been selected in could be far away, so parents may not want to take them, or travelling costs may be too much. Mm -hmm. At an elite stage, there is not a, not a large amount of pro clubs to aim for, um, so clubs that they've been asked to play for could be far away again. So may not be able to get there with costs and you know, so. Right, good. Scott? Um, we found foundation in females doing sports. Not a lot of places will want to fund the kind of facilities that you'll need for extra coaching staff for all the female football teams, so they'll mainly concentrate on males, which could like lead into participation where they don't want to put them in a league if there's not going to be that many teams that will actually try to involve a female team. Right. Uh, perf in performance, like because there isn't that many teams that will, they will they'll be very very selective about who they'll let into the academies and that. So which links into elite one as well because the very it's very high. You need to be very good to go into the top teams. So you have to come through academies. You can't just get transferred around because it's not as big as the male. Spot. Right, good. Tom? Um, the foundation, at the foundation stage, um, with teenagers, it could affect them with if they've got friends and their friends play a different sport to the sport they want to do. Then they may lack a confidence that they want to do to go train with other people that they don't know. Um, another one is. Um, Again, it's just working part time. They might not be able to make it to training on specific nights. So, what stage might that stop them progressing up to? Uh, the participation stage, which is where you start playing with the uh, with the confidence of the doing participation. You might not be confident in playing full eleven aside football on a weekend with other players that are on a opposing team that you don't want to really get involved with. Um, and with participation on time, they could be they might not be able to make the games at the weekend due to work, and um, without that, they can't really become the player they really want to be without the competitive um, games. Anything else to add? Uh, with the performance, if they get trials at certain clubs, but they don't want to go because of the confidence levels in the field, or they can't get. They won't be able to get into the academy. I won't be able to progress any further, and that could stop them from going to the trial and becoming a better player. And with time, if they get an invitation, but um, they might not be able to make it due to our family problems or again work. Uh, with elite, um, they could be a really shy player and struggle to play in front of big crowds, and with the fear of. Um, basically struggling in big matches to perform to the level that I expected to perform at. Um, and basically with time, when you're elite, you basically have to make time because you're professional. Right. Anything else to add, lads? Are we right? Yeah. yeah. Done?